Right. Okay, hey guys, okay. this is obviously our helicopter, oh, and uh, I'll show you a bit of it inside, alright? Um, so if you want to come around, and we'll, we'll just show you what, what it looks like. So, we have one of the paramedics sits in the front seat here, and then we have the pilot, obviously Mark, who's um, just disappeared. He um, sits in the front, obviously flies, flies the helicopter. Um, and then we have one of the other paramedics who sits in the back with these two seats here. And then what we'll do is um, we'll get this patient, get a patient onto this stretcher here. We've got quite a few bags here. Well, um, if you want to stand yourselves back, I'll pull it out for you. Or Rob, okay? Just do the system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come around. Mm. So if, we, if we're picking a patient up, what we'll do is we'll slide our chair around and then we'll load these, the patients onto this stretcher here. We'll put our bags in the front and then just get everything we need out and pop it in the seats that we can. Um, we've got all our equipment in there, so we've got um, all our medical uh, equipment in terms of trauma as well, uh, and medical gases as well that we need. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll show you around the back and we can see how cramped it is and we probably can't get everyone crammed in to have a look. But um, that's it, anything else Robin? <laughs> No, no. no, it's basically the same as what an ambulance carries, yeah. a normal ambulance, but we have to carry quite a bit less because we've got not, not got the same room, but we, our, our equipment is a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact, and we carry a few different things, a few extra <coughs> extra drugs and extra uh, extra equipment that the, the road ambulances don't carry in the So because of um, uh, weight is a big issue with us, so we have to um, obviously keep an eye on how much we're carrying, so we can't carry and lots of equipment. One you can't see that's down behind this chair here, is what they call a collective lever and that's a power lever and really it's like an accelerator on a car if i want to go faster i pull it up to you're pulling one and pushing another one and then you've got the pedals at the front and that the tail rotor is called a fenestron it's like a it stops the aircraft spinning and by the aircraft the is very modern so it's got computers that control the engines in the old days the pilot had a throttle that he had to just like a motorbike where you twist the throttle and, and the aircraft and you have to get the engines up to speed whereas this has got a computer that does, it, does everything for you. It still has throttles that you can use if the computers fail. But generally speaking, it, it's, it's a very, very reliable helicopter uh, and it, it, it's a lovely to fly. It's a really nice machine to fly. And it's a Eurocopter 135. And it's, uh, it's a really nice machine. Yeah. Anything you want to ask me? Any questions? How many hours have you got, Mark? Me? Yeah. Ooh, quite a lot. Yeah, a few thousand. About 13,000. Uh, quite a lot of hours. So I've been flying for me. I flew yeah. in the Air Force for a long time. So I've been flying for many years. So you learned, uh, where did you learn that? I learned it in the Air Force to fly. Oh, really? In the RAF, yeah. 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 How would you save someone if they're like, you can't land? Well, we don't, we, we normally, we will always tend to manage to land somewhere. And if we can't get close to the patient, then the patient gets brought to us. So we always do tend to manage to land somewhere. Um, it's very, I don't think I've ever not managed to land. We might be a little bit further away, um, but often we can land right next to the patient. Uh, today we went to somebody that had been uh, kicked by a horse and we managed to land in the, the field. Which the horses are normally quite good because you can land very close. Um, and so it, it just depends. In built up areas you have to be very careful of wires and lamp posts and things. But generally speaking you can land. It's, it looks, I know it looks like a big helicopter, but actually it's small enough to get into some quite small places. We take, sorry again? How long does it take to learn it? Yeah. Well you could learn to fly a helicopter privately in about 45 hours. Uh, and then it uh, it takes a little bit longer to get used to it to actually get yeah. it. And it's not so much the flying; it's the it's what all the controls and the instruments and navigation and radios and lots of things like that that you have to deal with. Awesome. Uh, what would you say is the hardest part uh, about flying it? Is it the road? Um, no, not really. I think it's it's often it's it's not really, it, but it's choosing where to land safely. So you're not going to. Uh, cause any damage to people on the ground, or you're going to manage to get the patient quickly. So yeah. that, that's the that's the key, really. So, um, but, uh, which part takes up most of your time? Is it really? Um, landing? It's, it's it really it's all combined. It's the landing. The landing probably is, is the, where you're concentrating the most. Because you have to land it most difficult.